Hi guys! Yo. Got the f out of there. I kind of forgot to do this this morning, so I'm doing it on the way home, so you, you know, the scenery is probably a little different. Plus, the mountains a bit. Yeah. I actually just came back from a tour of the National Museum. I can't speak today. The National Museum of Australia with the Indigenous History and Self Expression class. Woo! You see? We learned about uh, Aboriginal history and how it's expressed and framed and I don't even need to get around this truck. Everyone in Canberra who hasn't gone to the museum should go to the museum. It's free and it's it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So much stuff to do. This isn't really a news item, but more of something that I've stumbled across. I did I stumbled across it before, but it re recently boiled under my skin again is music download prices. A song on iTunes in Australia is about $2.20, right? In America, it's 99 cents. What the f is, I mean, what validates it to be that high? That's 150% higher. And the Australian dollar is stronger than, is higher than the American. So if you're going solely on conversion rates, that's separate, right? A while ago, I emailed iTunes about it. I asked them why is it, why are American prices cheaper than, than it is in, in Australia? And they gave me pretty much the same answer that they gave Hack, which is a Triple J radio show, new show. I'll put the link down in my glove box so you can have a look at that. Uh, pretty much what iTunes said was that the Australian iTunes store is separated from the American iTunes store and all other iTunes stuff. So pretty much they exist and operate within Australia like an actual store. So that means they buy their licenses from the labels, so it's not iTunes' fault. It is a little bit, but I'll get get onto that. Um, so the labels, which mark the which mark the globe into regions, different regions have different licensing prices, and for some reason, Australians have a higher region pricing. Don't know why. It's not like. They actually have to press a CD and then have it shipped out to us. It's not. It's not like um, copyright law is that different here in Australia. And so it's not that either. I think what it all comes down to is corporate greed. This is the point why it's a bit iTunes fault. A bit iTunes, bit consumerism, is that iTunes doesn't have a big competitor. Like in America, they can keep prices down a little bit, but that's solely because of Amazon, Amazon MP3, which you can't get here in Australia. I mean, the main competitor in Australia is Big Pond Music. Big Pond Music is a lot cheaper, it is, but they don't have the range as what iTunes do. So they can't have a real market share. Uh, in 2011, this is from the Hack Report, they had about 30% of market share on online download. Now, this is what annoys me, right? You have things like CISPA, where corporations like this are saying, Oh, but people are downloading, people are downloading too many things, oh... We need to get rid of privacy on the internet is to stop them from downloading our songs. You want them to stop downloading your songs? Make them reasonably priced. That's why people don't buy songs. It's because they can't afford them. Because you are so greedy with that. And the same thing goes with movies as well. Like, it, it's harder for movies, but Ah, oh, now, now we're going into piracy. 
and this is a tricky tangent to go on. Online piracy is a problem, right? It, it is a big problem because if something is pirated, the money doesn't go to the studio, it doesn't go to people who make it, and as a future, future director, that scares the hell out of me. But then you have to think about why people download it. People download things because it's not a re release in their country yet. It's too expensive. Like, and I think that's why the expense thing, I think that is why video shops still exist. Video shops still exist because you can go in and for 10 bucks have walk out with five movies, watch them have a good time. If you were, you, you could do a similar thing with iTunes, but it's like $10 for a weekly hire. Again, they have a great range, um, it's easy, but it's not worth it. If you were given the opportunity to download a movie from a peer-to-peer -peer source and then keep it, well knowing that you're not paying for it, or pay for it from iTunes, but only keep it for a certain time, now there are a few factors that will judge this decision. You have, one, to pirate it, there's always a quality factor there. People get them up quickly, people film them in, in cinemas. While the legal download, you know it's going to be clean, you're paying for quality, right? The reason people will go for pirate, it, one, one of the reasons people might go for pirate is because it's faster. Now, I've had this view about a lot of things really, like um, I downloaded a trial version of uh, Adobe Master Suite, and I'm still working off that. And what I was doing with that, I was downloading it directly from their servers. And I was thinking, because it's 40 odd gig, it's a big file, and it's I'm only contacting their one server and downloading. I had crap into everything, and I was thinking, what if you use, what if corporations use peer-to-peer -peer downloading software. It would save on their computing costs and it would speed up download times. Happy customers. Let's take the Adobe Master Suite for example. If they were to do that, they could offer a little bit of a discount for people who want to host the file. People who would have the file constantly on their computer to be sent out, to be um, downloaded by other people and then everyone would be happy. All legal, all fine, it will be cheaper, it will be faster, and if your service go down, there's millions of other people to seed. That seed is where you upload. Sounds good, but peer-to-peer -peer has this stigma about it. Peer-to-peer -peer has the stigma that it is only for illegal uses. And at the moment, it pretty much is. Like, a lot of it is illegal downloads. However, there are different things like um, Bitcoin, which is, it's like PayPal, where, it's like where you send payments and things like that, except it's done over a peer-to-peer -peer base, so it's hard to hack it. Very hard to hack. It's safer, there are no fees, like all legal ways of doing that. There's also, like on the Pirate Bay, which is a very big peer-to-peer -peer downloading torrent service and a lot of amateur filmmakers have uploaded their stuff there to be downloaded by all to see but I just came off a little bit of a tangent there because that didn't really answer my question would you rather download something or buy it off iTunes or any other Netflix I suppose if you're in America love Netflix um, I wish we had something like it in Australia. The closest thing that we have to Netflix, Netflix in America is where you can, you pay a subscription and you get to watch so many movies online or you can get DVDs. Now we have a similar service here in Australia called Quitflix, but that is solely DVDs. That, I think a subscription based service would work. I mean it works in America, doesn't it? It does. You can't really dispute that. So, why is it so scary to do it here? I suppose the other service that we kind of have 
here, here in Australia is Foxtel On Demand. Sort of the same thing, but not. Because it, it doesn't have the... Again, it doesn't have the range. Doesn't... There are plenty of web shops out there that will deal to Australia. But very little that has the range as iTunes does. That's because people like iTunes. It's easy. People buy their iPods, there it is, iTunes. People play music through iTunes because who uses bloody Windows music player? Nobody. Everybody uses just iTunes. No. The only people who use Windows Mo Windows Media Player are people who can't get iTunes because their computer is locked or something. Even then people get iTunes. So, people are familiar with iTunes. Apple has pretty much built their market around that fact. People get comfortable with their product. It's the same reason why it's so hard to get out of the Mac world. Like, I'm still a Mac boy, I have, a Mac, I have two Macs, an iPad, but I've, I got rid of my iPhone. I'm using the Samsung Galaxy, which I'm loving, but that's one thing that I am missing from the iPhone, is the iTunes Store. Because if I heard a song that I liked, or I Shazammed it, Shazam is a great app, by the way, guys. I, you listen, like, put your phone up to something, and then it listens to the music going around, and then it tells you what music it is. So I put a link down in the love box for that as well. But, like, on my iPhone, I'll just do that. Like it, I'll, I'll buy it. I will go out, I'll, I'll just hit, um, show me the iTunes link, then I'll download it, and then it's on my phone. I can listen to it, no problems. Shazam is on Android, and I have it, and it's great. But it does not do what I want it. Because doesn't do the whole iTunes thing because obviously you can't get iTunes on Android. Which I really wish that they would. I mean, you're pretty much blocking yourself a whole heap of clients. So when I Shazam something, the media, the, the download link from that is Amazon. I can't do anything with Amazon. I'm Australian. I can't even download the app. But what I was saying in a long about way is that people are familiar with Apple, people who are familiar with Apple are familiar with iTunes and vice versa. Apple have the advantage, Apple have the home ground advantage because they don't need to advertise. They did. They, they used to. But now they really don't need to advertise it because everyone knows what iTunes is. It's hard to find someone that doesn't. But, I was only able to find some of these other music shops like uh, 199 Songs and .net and a whole heap of other ones is when I went on to a forum. I had to go forum digging to find iTunes alternatives in Australia. Which is sad. Some of them are actually really good, but I went out looking for um, Sam and the Womps, Boom Boom. If you guys don't know, I think of the new Kmart ad, it's that song. On iTunes, it was uh, close to um, $3, it was $2.99 actually. Something like that, because there was a new release, and yada yada yada. But the fact that I had to go looking for for all these different services just shows how big iTunes is. And it's a problem. Like, personally, I I use JB Hi-Fi Now service, which is a, is a subscription-based song archive thing. Um, it's like Roof Shark, except you have to pay for it. A little bit better. And you can go all around the on your phone, on your computer, it's good. Yeah, it has a pretty good range. So all these what I listen to, it has it on there. And it's always growing. And I got that free with my Mac. So I'm liking it. I'm not sure if I would have gone out and bought it. I probably would have. 
like I'm, I'm thinking about buying a membership after um, my three years is up with this one, or have how I have long it is, because it is a good service. I get to listen to whatever songs I I want, and on my phone I can even um, download it into the app, so I can listen to it when I'm offline. And I mean that service is great. What if we had that for movies? Alright, sorry guys, my, um, two things I'm sorry for it actually was, one, my phone was going dead, so I had to plug it in, two, the blurriness, I am so hoping I'm still not blurry, because my phone's turned backwards, I can't see what the screen's recording, and it must have focused on my hand when it was up here or something, please don't focus again. Um, and then left me on blurry. I don't. I don't know. Sorry about that. Not my videos. My um, weekly video. Uh, link in the glove box. Was I had a light in the frame? Anyway, what I was saying about JB Hi-Fi now being a subscription service where you um, listen to songs wherever, whenever you like. Which I think is great. Why? Why can't we have that for Australian movies, or movies in general? It's worth it. The studios still get their money, and everyone's happy. Everyone is happy. But no, for some reason these companies just don't like the idea that Australians pay lower rates than what the Americans do. I mean, why? Honestly, if you know an exact reason why they do this, that's actually a good reason, not just because they can sort of thing, then please, for the love of God, let me know in the comments or video response. Because I want to know. I want to know why I'm paying $3 for a song that's 99 cents in America. It's not on. It's making me rage about that. And I don't like to rage about things. It's not like I do a YouTube series about it. Speaking of my YouTube series, I'm going to introduce a third one. This third one, it's, it's not going to be a frequent thing. It's going to be a monthly thing. It's going to be a short film thing. Once a month, I'm not sure when. I'm thinking the last Sunday of each month or like, you'll get it sometime during each month. It will be a short film. Like, fully artistic, sort of, like, seven, eight minute long movie. Because I'm at uni, I can use professional cameras and sound and studios. And so that's going to be good. So once a month, you're going to get that. Which, if I say at the start of the year, that would be about 12, of um, installments, which is about the same, which is about the same as a um, TV show. Yeah, twelve episodes. It's about right. So it's not going to be forty-five minutes long, but whatever. Another change to YouTube is if you're one of my older fans. Subscribers, uh, you would remember Deep Gravy, a channel that I created with Sarah. Um, I haven't, we haven't uploaded anything to that in almost a year, maybe even a bit more. So, and set, now that Sarah's working, it's really hard to do stuff. So I've decided and Sarah agrees with me that we're taking, we're closing Deep Gravy Productions. I'm going to be closing the YouTube channel. Uh, with the YouTube channel, I'm going to be downloading all the videos and up, re-uploading it on my channel under the playlist Deep Gravy Productions. And I also might be getting rid of some of my friend playlists. 
more of that later. I... Alright okay, guys, um, according to my phone, I only have about 30 seconds left of storage left in my car, which I think is bull****. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, so yeah, DKV is going to go. And uh, like, like, favorite, and share this video if you liked it. And while you're there, hit subscribe. Uh, farewell, and take care.